The war with Amanda Waller rages on, and the only way Batman is going to be able to help the superpowered community is if he's willing to break bread with Catwoman once again. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman issue number 151, a tie into the absolute power event, and find out what happens next together, shall we? Alrighty then, so picking up from where the last issue left off, Batman had come to the realization that one of the important cogs in Waller's never-ending war machine is actually a mother box. Batman hopes he can deal a major blow against Task Force 7 if he can steal it. The only problem is he's not a master thief. Luckily, he knows one, though, in the form of Selina Kyle. If you've been paying attention, these two's relationship has been up and down and all over the damn place recently. They're in love, they're out of love, they're friends, but they're not friends. They want to be together, but they know they can't be together. Honestly, it's impossible to keep straight. And ultimately not that important because Catwoman agrees to help Batman given the severity of the situation. The only problem is what neither of them know is they're not the only one who have been dispatched to the mother box as it seems that Amanda Waller has also sent out Task Force X, her own personal and original leg breakers to run interference. Now, despite what we might have heard in the last issue, Batman and Catwoman aren't actually going to Waller's stronghold on the island nation of Gamora. Instead, they're going off the coast of the fictional Gamora to the very real Okinawa in Japan. Of course, because members of the superhero community are still technically being treated as public enemies, enemies number one, thanks to Amanda Waller and Task Force 7. Bruce and Selina simply can't just rock up as their alter ego, so instead they need to create cover stories. They're working for a private military contracting firm, who has paid big bucks to have an illegal off-the-books meeting with the local general running the army base. In fact, in a surprising bit of topicality, this issue also brings up how the locals in Okinawa don't exactly like the American military base there and haven't for a very long time. Batman and Catwoman assume that Waller must be keeping the mother box close to the chest here in the army base, and once Selina sees the members of the Suicide Squad rock up, she knows full well that it must be nearby. Selina stealthily follows the squad from the shadows, only to realize way too late that while all the heroes might be cut off from the sources of their magical power, Waller's pet villains are not. Black Alice using her powers to find Catwoman in the brush. Batman swoops on in to make the save, and before you know it, a big brawl ends up breaking out. Catwoman's even got some jokes this issue, too, making fun of Deadeye, Waller's nephew. Oh, which one are you again? Are you Deathstroke? Are you Deadshot? I can never keep track. The rank-and-file members of the squad aren't exactly too hard for Batman and Catwoman as a team to overcome. The real ace in the hole for Task Force X, though, is Bizarro. Well, technically outlaw Bizarro, not the one from Bizarro World. If you had read that Dreamer Suicide Squad book like I did, then you'll remember that it seemed like he might actually have been killed by Waller in that book, but he's back now, and also, he's been upgraded with brand new Brainiac tech to help keep him in line after turning against Waller in that Dreamer Suicide Squad story I mentioned. He's also speaking backwards now, which, wait, did Outlaw Bizarro do that? Am I crazy, or is this an actual oversight? Either way, though, Batman manages to overcome Robo Bizarro's super strength by using his own super intelligence to play him like the child-minded creature that he is. It's also during the fight, too, we see Batman man get a little apprehensive about bringing Selina into the field like he did. No matter what might have occurred between the two, it's obvious he still loves her very much and he would never be able to live with himself if she died or got hurt on a mission that Batman asked her to join him on. Bat and Cat fight their way to an underground facility that they're certain must be housing the mother box. Unfortunately, when they get there, they find no box, but instead a boom tube, a new god portal. Too well God only knows where, and because our heroes don't exactly have a back backup plan, and because they've come all this way, they have no choice but to throw caution to the wind and jump on into the portal. Both our heroes are incredibly shocked to realize where they end up getting spat out on the other side. It's the Waller family mortuary. It seems that Amanda has been keeping the mother box right next to her dead children and husband, which even Batman has to admit, that's pretty macabre. And this is coming from a guy who also has a family cemetery on his property. Surprise, surprise, though, while they're in Waller's own personal mausoleum, they're not actually on Earth. In fact, they're on planet Zarnia. It seems that Waller was planning to use the mother box as her own personal life raft in case things got too hot on Earth. She would be able to escape with the only things she cared about to a planet that has conveniently been abandoned for decades. In fact, she even paid to have her own security here in the form of Gunsmith. Yeah, remember this guy, the James Tynan created assassin? We haven't seen him forever. I love the deep cut. This means that as the comic comes to 
will close, Batman and Catwoman are in space, far from home, out of luck, and totally cornered by the Suicide Squad. And so that was Batman issue number 151, and as far as tie-in issues go, this one was pretty fun. I like that uh, Chip Zdarsky used this event story as an excuse to focus on the strained relationship between Batman and Catwoman, a relationship that didn't exactly get any better during his Batman run thanks to stories like Gotham War. And while Bruce has managed to patch stuff up with the family, he hasn't exactly patched it up with Catwoman yet. I also enjoy the whole field trip feel to this story. We don't get near as much globetrotting Batman as we used to, and Okinawa actually serves as a fun backdrop to this little adventure. This issue is also pretty rewarding, too, as someone who read that Dreamer Suicide Squad book, because a lot of the stuff that actually happened there is referenced here, and it's always nice to be rewarded for reading everything. Beyond that, so far, I wouldn't call this story exactly necessary reading for anything that's going on in the pages of Absolute Power right now, but it does a good job of doing the dishes, which is why I give it a 7 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cape Jewel, again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description? Yes, that's right. The Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way, everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.